Good morning, everybody. It's late, or it's early. It's 4.20 a.m. Thursday morning. Uh, continuing into the subject of mythology, gods, Nephilim, DNA manipulation, Genesis, the Garden of Eden, all throughout the ages. How have they done it? Well, tonight we're looking at a September 29th episode of Prophecy in the News, which is a fine channel and I recommend it highly. Many guests speak the truth and they'll show you things maybe you never knew or understood. Gary Stearman is also a well-respected and highly regarded expert in his field. So, tonight's subject of transhumanism, let's give it a listen. Well, let's welcome Tom Horn back to Prophecy in the News. Tom, always good to have you here. Hey, Gary, great to be with you as always. One of eschatology's premier scholars. I am. Well, <laughs> we're here to talk about you today and not me. And I'll tell you what, I always love it when Tom comes because he is a, a, a veritable fountainhead of information and particularly information such as the type contained in Pandemonium's engine. Pandemonium's engine. Where did that title come from? Because I know a lot of people are going to listen. I know what Pandemonium is. I saw that at the store the other day. But Pandemonium's engine, what is that? Yeah, well, this a term, of course, the ancient term Pandemonium, that describes all of the chaos that occurs on Earth when uh, all the demons break through. Um, but there actually was something a little uh, more interesting about the title, and that, as you know, in John Milton's classic Paradise Lost, Pandemonium is the capital of hell Ooh. in the underworld. Yeah. And in that classic, this is where the powers of Lucifer come together, and they discuss how they're going to go about tempting God's new creation. And this is where the plan is devised to tempt them to eat of the tree of the knowledge, forbidden knowledge, and that if they eat of it, they're going to become as gods. And I saw kind of a parallel in this to what the topic of Pandemonium's engine is really all about, the promise of transhumanism, the genetics revolution, we are going to become as gods. And is it a temptation again to partake of forbidden fruit? Well, as you were talking, I turned my Bible to uh, Genesis 3.15, where the Lord says to the first couple and to Satan, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. The idea of seed here is the idea of genetics. Seed being the biblical term for a uh, genome, uh, the human genome in this case, but there's another genome there. There's the, the seed of the serpent. And I think a lot of people tend to spiritualize that and, and to say, well, we're talking here about the, the evil serpent. But really we're talking about a battle that has been raging for thousands of years and is coming back to full scale today. Yeah, it's coming back and faster than most people imagine. And there's a couple of different ways to track on this idea, Gary. One being that what is being called the coming human enhancement revolution is going to be here a lot faster than most people are prepared for. But secondly, as a former pastor of uh, 25 years and having an interest, of course, in evangelical issues, um, I've noted that most of the church seems to be unaware of what is happening within the genetics revolution, especially as it is poised to alter what it means to be uh, a human. Well, let's look at a few chapter heads here. Uh, genetic tampering is one chapter head. Uh, Doug Woodward has uh, written a chapter, The Ubermensch, The Antichrist, uh, The Ubermensch, The Superman, The Better Than Human Man. Uh, there's a bit about Nimrod here. Uh, how about transhumanism? Uh, how about Christian approval of transhumanism? You know, improvement in the American 
vernacular is always better. Let's let's improve that. You know, it's good the way it is. Let's make it better. And in talking with you over the past months, it's become very clear to me, and you're a major researcher in this field, it's become very clear that we're trying to make humans better, quote unquote. Why settle for a weak and, and sickly human, you know, who would live for an average of 80 years or so? Let's make humans better. Let's make them live to, to be 120, 30 years old. Let's make them stronger. Let's, let's make humans that can think better. And we'll do it by manipulating the genetic material, which is now within our capability. What's wrong with that? Right. Well, that's really the big question, and that's why, in so many ways, especially humanistically, it appeals to us. What's wrong with curing all that ails us uh, and creating homo superior, humans 2.0, a yeah. better version of what we are today, stronger, faster, way past uh, you know the, the $6 million man concepts and the film series from years ago. And now we're talking literally about uh, redesigning our genetics through germline genetic engineering so that it doesn't just alter the specimen we're working on, but it would pass on to all succeeding generations a better version of humanity. So we're going to use genetics, uh, neuropharmacology to enhance our performance abilities. We're going to brain-machine interface ourselves with artificial intelligence systems. You might have saw the Time Magazine article not long ago where Time Magazine interviewed Mr. Singularity, Ray Kurzweil, yeah. uh, talking about how we're soon going to reach strong technological singularity. And as a result of all of these sciences, um, there really is the belief now in the transhumanist community, and besides the transhumanist community in the military, uh, among academics, that what we are doing with genetically modified crops what we are doing with genetically modified animals, the next step, we will begin to genetically re-engineer humanity. And your opening chapter here, <clears throat> unbeknownst to us, a technological revolution is quietly developing in which mankind will either will soon experience utopian physical and spiritual transformation or a dystopian nightmare resulting in Armageddon and then you add this little sentence this is not preacher talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. we're, we're not this is not pie in the sky this is not theoretics we're talking about things that people are actually doing right now and intending and funding and and what the public should be aware of if they're not already is that this is coming from the most prestigious highest ranking think tanks uh, policy uh, advisors committees in the world, the Jasons, for instance. This is the highest uh, uh, advisory panel to the U.S. Department of Defense. And just a few months ago, published a, a white paper called uh, The $100 Genome, Implications for the Department of Defense, in which they're talking about the cost of sequencing genes coming down to 100 bucks. Uh, anybody, including a terrorist or a college student, can buy a gene sequencing machine, and the cost now of brewing up living biological systems is coming down rapidly. Well, what the what the the Jasons though are saying to the U.S. military is that obviously our competitors or our potential enemies could get ahead of us in this research, and then they could use this to create weaponized biological systems against which we couldn't possibly be prepared. And so, if a person wanted to Google that the one hundred dollar genome and get it and read it they'll notice that the Jason specifically talk about genotype and phenotype. And if you remember your basic biology in, in school, genotype is what you are internally. It's the genetic blueprint that you received from your parents that make you what you are. But phenotype is how that is expressed. The fact that you look like you look and you walk and you talk and you have the capacity for speech. And what the Jasons are telling the Department of Defense is that as we begin reconstructing the genotype of living biological systems, including humans, they're going to start walking different, acting different, behaving differently, and we're not prepared for what is coming. But it's coming anyway. A superior class. <clears throat> you know, the subtitle of Pandemonium's Engine, which I'm holding here, is Satan's Imminent and Final Assault on the Creation of God. That imminent and final assault is expressed in Genesis 3.15, the seed of the serpent. 
That is to say, it's been Satan's goal since time immemorial to corrupt the human genome. And there's biblical evidence, and in fact, <clears throat> if I pick up my Bible and turn it to Isaiah 26, there's a class of people mentioned by Isaiah in Isaiah 26, 14, called the dead, who will never be resurrected. And Isaiah says, they are dead, they shall not live, they are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore thou hast visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. The, the dead is translated from the Hebrew word rephaim. And the rephaim are a mutated being. A, a mutated human, if you will. And that mutated being, which is mentioned all the way through the Old Testament, is incapable of being resurrected. In other words, only uh, human tissue as developed and expressed through God is eligible for uh, redemption through and, Christ. And, and, it, and, and it's some of these very deep, um, both spiritual and philosophical questions that are being raised about what we are intending to do now with new forms of genetically recalibrated humans. Questions come up, do they have a soul? Yeah. This Absolutely. is the question that surrounds the creation of the ancient Raphaim. If, for example, and you and I were talking about this, uh, among many, many other things, by the way, it's always fascinating to talk to Tom because it's an endless exploration of, of ideas that are both biblical and have to do with modern research. But, Tom, we were talking about what if you could take the speech center of the human brain and genetically transplant that into, say, an ape, and suddenly the ape the next generation of apes were able to speak and you say well that that's just impossible oh no there are people are talking about doing that right now it's if you want to read today's news it's in the newspaper yeah as a matter of fact here is the look at the size of this yeah the Academy of Medical Scientists out of Britain published this report only two weeks ago on animals containing human material uh, in which what they're saying is this science is advancing so quickly and much of it is being done without any kind of oversight. Wow. There's no rules uh, revolving around it and much quicker than the public is even aware of and uh, the creation of humanized animals that can lead to such things as speech, human-like facial structures. Yeah. Um, but this, this genie is out of the bottle. The day after this report was filed, there was one laboratory in Britain that admitted they had already created 150 human-animal chimeras uh, for experimental purposes. Yeah, you mentioned uh, chimera, or ch chimera, it's pronounced various ways, but the chimera is seen in the ancient world. Uh, a lion with a man's head, a, a human body with the head of an ibis, that would be the Egyptian god Thoth, the god of intelligence. Uh, the chimeras are rampant. If you look at Greco-Roman statuary, the centaur, the satyr, and everybody says, oh, aren't those cute? I believe that we've been here and done these things before. I do too. As a matter of fact, um, people often think that, that, that those images are only mythological, yes. uh, the figments of imaginations. I have for years believed that it's actually a mute record. It's a testimony of something. It's almost like a warning from these various cultures of something that happened once before when animal and human genetics were integrated that led to monstrosities, ultimately, of course, leading to the flood. But, Gary, now for the first time since the Great Flood, scientists are intentionally repeating something that, as far as we know in history, only ever happened once before, and it didn't end very well the last time around. It's and and is this therefore a fulfillment of end times prophecy? It has to be, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of coming of the Son of Man. Uh, a repetition of that culture. And the lid is off. Uh, the, the lid is off on research. Scientists will tell you, oh, we're creating, a, a, there was a recent article about a chicken with the beak of a dinosaur that had little teeth in it. And by law, they have to destroy those embryos after 14 days. And, oh, yeah, we're, we're destroying the embryos. We're not letting them grow to adulthood. Uh, care to take uh, <laughs> a chance on that? I think they're, they're probably not only letting them grow, but 
there nurturing them and experimenting with more and more complex embryos. Well, if they haven't, it's what they intend to do now. This whole report, the Academy of Medical Sciences, is not to create um, an environment that prohibits the research. What they're calling for is for rules and regulations to be developed around the growing of these human monstrosities to maturity for longer term uh, experiments. By the way, it isn't just human animal chimera experimentation. The Brookings Institute, which is the largest policy think tank in the world and the most important policy think tank in the United States right now, right now are publishing a whole series of articles that are intended to create the legalese around extending the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the, uh, of the United States to human non-humans. You can go there and read article number 9, article number 10, where they're talking about genetically engineering homosexual communities. That in the very near future, according to the Brookings Institute, uh, homosexual marriage will be federally guaranteed. Then two men fall in love, they create these scenario stories so they can introduce the ideas around the law. Uh, fall in love, they want to have true genetic offspring. Uh, so they have their genetics combined and use a host for growing this baby. But furthermore, they want the baby to be born predisposed to a homosexual orientation. So they tweak its genetics, they add genes that then have been identified as being inherent to homosexual uh, uh, preferences so that they can ensure that when this child is born, it will be a... So we're talking literally about a gay Gattaca. We're talking about creating whole communities of genetically engineered uh, gay people. This, too, could be prophetic, as it was in the days of uh, Locke. And so um, this is why I say on so many different levels, the idea around what we are doing in the genetics right now of humans, animals, plants, all, cease to, all seems to be an all-out assault on God's creative genius that goes back to that Genesis prophecy about the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman being set at odds one toward each other. And this is why, of course, Pandemonium's engine, why we gathered all of these scholars to address the various aspects of this issue, because in my opinion, nothing could be more prophetic. All of the Bible is all about genetics, the purity of genetics, and a war over genetics. Now, I know Tom to be a fundamental Bible-believing Christian, as am I. He believes in the full and divine expression of the Word of God. We, we believe the Bible. We teach the Bible. And, and we believe that those who are biblically literate should also be literate in what is happening right now, which the Bible prophesied, by the way, for the end times. The book, almost 400 pages, is called Pandemonium's Engine, and uh, it, it is a, a great read and, and contains a lot more information than we'll have time to relate on today's broadcast. Pandemonium's Engine, 1695, plus shipping and handling, and uh, you can just call the 800 number on your screen, 1-800-475-1111. And to, to kind of balance out things, we're going to give you a free book. This book uh, is by Dr. Robert Pepra Giamfi, and he has written Seeing God Through the Human Body. You can kind of wash your mind out with this, because this doctor talks about God's elegant design of the human being. And so this is the good side. <laughs> you want to understand prophecy, pandemonium's engine, both of these books together, just call that 800 number and ask for the Pandemonium, uh, Pandemonium's Engine Package. And you'll get both books, 1-800-475-1111. Tom, where, where should we go from here? Because it's your feeling, I know, we've talked a long time about this, and it's mine as well, that it's time for Christians to get serious, wake up and realize what's going on. As they say, wake up and smell the coffee. The world is moving in a drastically evil direction. Christians need to be prepared for what's going on. And, and in this book, Pandemonium is Engine, we do try to take these very complex issues and parse them down into language that the average person will be able to understand why they should care about this issue. Why should I care what transhumanists want to do? Well, because, of course, of the prophetic implications, but also because every man, woman, boy, and girl, if the Lord should tarry, in the future are going to be impacted 
by this science, and probably sooner than most people are prepared for. And so we want them to get involved in the dialogue, in the ethics, in the religious aspects of what it might mean to permanently undo God's creation. You ask simple questions. What does God know that we don't know? Why did he put barriers between the species and order that each kind only reproduce after its own kind? And by the way, he did. That was one of the strong dicta in the, in the Law of Moses. That any mingling of species was sternly forbidden in the law. Right. Well, and, and so why did he do that? Is he a big, bad, meanie god that doesn't want us to have any fun? Of course uh, not. He's, he is benevolent, and he is protecting us from the unknown. He's protecting us from things. See, another way that this could be prophetic, I mentioned the Brookings Institute. It could fulfill uh, Luke's prophecy about the return of the days of Lot. You mentioned Matthew 24, 37. It definitely seems that this is a repeat of what happened in the days of Noah when there was this illegal contaminating of human and animal genetics. But it also could be a fulfillment of prophecy in that it could lead to plagues of end time proportion. There are security agents that are staying up having sleepless nights right now worrying over bioterrorists uh, getting some of this open source information, getting their own gene sequencer, and, um, yeah. uh, and, con and creating a cross-contamination, for instance, between animals and humans that could lead to a literal uh, molecular biological nightmare. Yep. Pandora's box, you know, once the lid is open, once the technology is generally known, it can go into the hands of terrorists, evil men, and epidemics could be created. Right. Well, for instance, there's a movie that's called I Am Legend uh, by uh, Will Smith, stars in it, the right. popular actor. The opening scene is in a newsroom. There is a woman who is a molecular biologist or a geneticist, and she is sitting there and she is saying, we have found the cure to cancer. Well, I love this scene because it's based on real prospective science. How did they find the cure for cancer? Well, they know that some animals are very resilient to cancer. So they combine animal and human genetics out of which they produce the vaccine. And then they vaccinate all mankind and they cure cancer and the world celebrates. But then the scene changes, right? And the unintended consequences oh, yes. are made manifest. And now almost all life on Earth is wiped out. What happened? A human form of rabies developed, something that's not natural to our species. But by crossing over this animal human barrier that God in his benevolent mercy put in place, we created a new strain of disease, a prion contamination. And the, and the scary part about this is, Gary, this is all based on real theoretical science. Absolutely. It really and truly is. And if I had children today, and of course mine are grown up, yours are grown up, uh, I would be preparing the kids uh, if I, by saying, look, we are created in God's image. You need to know created in God's image, and not by any design of man, no matter how beautiful it may be sold to you as a concept, you are a child of God. And I think, I think we need, as this generation needs to hear, that, that God's creation is on the verge of being spoiled, and, and there's a way to fight it. And that way is to become aware of what's going on. And to be preachers of the truth. Yes, to, to raise the consciousness. I've always believed that the church, of course, is the salt and light on earth. I've always believed that we're the power against which the gates of hell cannot prevail. Yes. Uh, and if we become preachers of the truth, if we are enunciators of the truth, and we bring God's application, what happens even within communities, even among the unsaved, is there's this check, there's something inside. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, right? And it can reach even into the unsaved community and cause red flags to go up. This is why I have a passion for the church to get involved in this conversation, because if we do, our kids, our grandkids, if the Lord should tarry, we can, we can provide some improvement, of course, for the world that they are going to inherit. If we do nothing, well, we know what happens. Alexis de Tocqueville and others told oh, yeah. us what happens when the righteous remain silent.
I've uh, contributed a chapter to this book called The Folly of Synthetic Life, in which I chronicle uh, the, uh, the life's work of a man who, by the way, is still in the news, even as we're making this program today. Uh, John Craig Venter, uh, the JCPI Institute, has, uh, has taken a, a cell, emptied out the natural contents, and replaced them with DNA of its own making, and they have patented what they call a new form of life. Uh, and they called it uh, uh, Mycoides Mycoplasma 1.01. And it is now a patented life form. And they're going to patent other life forms. And, and uh, they are now recommending, for example, human hybridization. Why? Well, if humans travel into outer space, we should alter the human body so that it's better adapted for space travel. And this will involve making a little adjustment here, a little adjustment there. You know, a few genomes changed here and a few genomes changed there. Nobody gets hurt. We travel into space. We come back. So all sounds very good, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, it, it, the first chapter typically does sound good. Um, yeah. But then it's a Mephistophelian bargain. It is. deal with the devil. It's back to why we named the book Pandemonium's Engine, that deal that was struck. Uh, in, in Paradise Lost. Uh, ye shall be as gods, as whispered in the ears of humanity. And, um, but where does it take us now? I think we're seeing a repeat of ancient science. Uh, and I think every Christian needs to be, especially a book like this can help them to understand the very basics. It kind of serves as a primer 101 to understand where this science is taken. It really does. And if you if you real, really would like to get a grasp of what's going on in the real world today and what an anti-God movement this, this whole thing is and how it expresses so much of Bible prophecy, uh, you need to obtain the, a copy of Pandemonium's Engine. <clears throat> 1695 for shipping and handling. Call the 800 number, 1-800-475-1111. And we are offering pandemonium's engine package to you we got a wonderful book seeing god through the human body which we're going to add at no extra charge yours for free because this book talks about the way god designed the body it was written by a medical doctor and it's a wonderful read so these two i think make a wonderful package for you 1695 uh, when you call 1-800-475-1111 just ask for the pandemonium's engine package or pandemonium's engine plus that free book i'm sure you'll remember and um, i think you'll really really find some amazing things in pandemonium's engine tom i think they now know what pandemonium's <laughs> engine is yeah hey and i hope they get the book from you they're definitely not going to get that free book from amazon it's a very good deal that free one's worth 12 or 14 dollars all by itself so written by a medical doctor it good is deal. best deal out there right now and for a, a Christian medical doctor to write about God's design of the human body, we need more of that. Yeah. Well, Tom, it, it's always exciting talking to you. And today, I, I sort of feel specially led to, to urge you in the Prophecy in the News audience to apprise yourself of the information of what's going on today. Spread it among your Christian friends. Let them know what's going on. You need to make this a matter of prayer. Uh, because we are fighting an enemy who's getting bolder and bolder every day. Tom, great to have you here. Now, Gary, thanks for having me back on. And we'll have you again really soon. Gary Stearman, wishing you a great day in the Lord. And, of course, as we always say in closing, keep looking up. Hello again, Gary Stearman with another edition of Prophecy in the News. Today, we have... I really like that. That was a very interesting talk, wasn't it? And they are doing it. So it's something to think about because it's all true. And there'll be more. I will find some more interesting things to bring you so that the truth is known and everyone can understand. Until then, Y'all have a good day tomorrow. I'll talk to you real soon. And just like he said, and just like I say, keep looking up because there's a whole lot of stuff going on. Oh, just one other thing. 
it was really clear tonight. And when I got home, I just had to stand there and just gaze. I had uh, a real good look at Orion. I mean, it looked like it was so close that I could just reach out and pull it down. So I finally got to see some stars. On that note, good night everyone.